Good morning, students. Please wait a moment. Right. In the yesterday's class, we have completed uh, main problems. So this ninth problem we didn't complete. They have asked you to an electron of mass 9.1 in 10 power minus 31 kc. It revolves around the nucleus in a circular orbit of radius 0 0.529 into 10 power minus 10 meters at a speed of 2.2 into 10 power plus 6 meters. The magnitude of its linear momentum is the magnitude of its linear momentum is so p is equal to m into v then p is equal to mass 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kc into v 2.2 2.2 into 10 power 6 2.2 into 10 power 6 hmm. then um, 22 uh, 2.2 into 9.1 Whenever we multiply, it's nearly two. So whenever we multiply this, 9.1 into 2.2 that we have to take. So this is uh, first we'll take 9.1 as 9 into 22 into 10 power minus 25. 10 power minus 25. So we whenever we multiply 22 into 9. Then we'll multiply 22 into 9. This is a nearly <clears throat> or 9.1. Whenever you multiply this 9.1 with the 22, instead of this, uh, if I take that 9.1 into 22, 9.1 into 2.2 into 10 power minus 25 it is. So 9.1 into 2.2 is uh, identically equal to 20. 20 into 10 power uh, minus 25. That we may write P is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 24. Kc meter per second. B option is correct. Next, the ionization potential uh, for helium electron is ionization potential. Nothing, ionization energy is the energy required to remove the electron from the uh, from a particular orbit. Completely, we have to remove it. Then, ionize, the corresponding potential will say that ionization potential. Then, ionization energy, ionization potential, uh, both will say will take that. So then uh, the ionization potential for second helium electron is, so ionization potential for the second helium electron, for the second helium ion, for the second helium electron, that is E is equal to Z square into 13.6, 13.6 that is in uh, ionization potential volts volts. Therefore, E is equal to, Z square means what? 2, helium 2, 4 it is. 
So two whole square into 13.6. Therefore, E is equal to four into 13.6. 4 into 13.6, that's nothing but 54.4. This is electron volts. 54.4 electron volts. Next. The, the energy required to remove an electron from hydrogen uh, hydrogen atom from the 10th state, from the 10th orbit, we have to remove the hydrogen. We have energy required to remove electron from hydrogen atom. Energy required E is equal to, E is equal to 13.6, it's plus, plus 13.6 divided by N square, divided by N square. 13.6 divided by n square electron volts. So from this, E is equal to 13.6 divided by n means what? 10. They have given that n is equal to 10. Therefore, 13.6 uh, uh, 10 whole divided by 10 whole square that is in electron volts. E is equal to 13.6 divided by 100. Therefore, E is equal to 0 0.136 electron volts. Zero point one three six electron volts. This is important, repeated problem many times. This is the transitions. What are the transitions? First two, A, B, C, three are three levels are there from b to c, c to b it has jumped again b to c b to a first to c to b and uh, b to a this is directly from c to a there will write the energy the corresponding energies they are released so this is the energy release taken as e1 this in this case energy release is taken as e2 this is the energy released e3 see here energy e3 will be equal to E3 will be equal to E1 plus E2. We know energy E is equal to H nu. Otherwise, E is equal to Hc by lambda. As 3, it is uh, H3 by lambda 3. Hc divided by lambda 1 plus Hc divided by lambda 2. From this, we will write Hc if I take common. Hc by lambda 3, that will be equal to Hc if I take common what it will be there? 1 by lambda 1 plus 1 divided by lambda 2. Then both sides will cancel Hc. Will cancel Hc. Therefore, 1 by lambda 3. 1 by lambda 3 is equal to 1 by lambda 1 plus 1 divided by lambda 2. So from this, if I take if I take lambda 1, lambda 2 LC. So lambda 2 plus lambda 1 will come. Therefore, lambda 3 is equal to, I'm writing the reciprocal. Lambda 3 is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Lambda 3 is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Next, the angular momentum of electron in the nth orbit is given by uh, angular momentum of electron in the n is equal to mvr. That will be equal to n into h divided by 2 pi. n into h divided by 2 pi. See. The ratio of the energies of hydrogen atom in first, first to second excited state. First excited state means what? Second orbit. Eh, second excited means what? A third orbit. So the ratio of energies of hydrogen atom in the first excited state. Ratio of energies of atom 
in the first excited state means what second orbit second orbit divided by energy in the third orbit so then energy e is uh, inversely proportional to n square e is inversely proportional to n square and then n2 by n1 e1 by e1 by e2 is equal to hey, n3 by n2 means third uh, first excited state and second exit otherwise uh, instead of this we'll write that uh, e1 for the first excited state first excited state this is the second excited state is equal to so this is in a second excited state divided by first excited state for the square we will write from this we will write e1 by e2 is equal to sec uh, second excited state means what third orbit first excited state means what second orbit so for the square therefore e1 divided by e2 is equal to e1 by e2 is equal to 3 3 sir 9 2 to sir 4 9 by 4 like this okay then i am going to start that other chapter semiconductors The next chapter is semiconductors. Semiconductors. In the semiconductors, we'll say that crystalline solids will be there, amorphous solids will be there. Crystalline solids. In the crystalline solids, uh, atoms or molecules will be arranged with the regular pattern. Examples for the crystalline solids, sugar, uh, quartz, mica, etc. This is the crystalline solids. These crystalline solids are anisotropic. Anisotropic means physical properties will be different in different directions but they will have the short melting points they will have short melting points next uh, amorphous solids amorphous solids they will have amorphous solids these amorphous solids uh, uh, in atoms, in amorphous solids, atoms or molecules will be arranged in irregular pattern. So examples for them is uh, rubber, glass, wax, etc. Amorphous solids examples are rubber, glass, wax, etc. These are the amorphous solids, right? Next, valence band, different energy bands are there. So first one is that valence band. It is uh, partially, it may be completely filled or partially filled with valence electrons. It may be partially filled or completely filled with the valence electrons. Um, but whenever we take one more band called as the conduction band, what is the energy band? It is set of the energy levels. Conduction band. So in the case of the conduction band, in the case of the conduction band, um, it may be empty or partially filled with the free electrons. So how these are? Based on this conduction means based on this uh, conducting ability of the substances, they have classified. So conductors which allow the free flow of the charge through them. 
semiconductors which allow the charge partially through them. And insulators, these are the bad conductors of electricity. Then examples for the conductors, metals. Examples for the metals are, examples for the conductors are metals. Examples for the semiconductors are germanium or silicon. Examples for the insulators, uh, insulators are bad conductors of electricity, wood, plastic, rubber, wall, etc. etc. Right? So then in case of the conductors, the um, there is no energy, there is no gap, there is no gap between that conduction band and the valence band. So the conduction band and valence band, they'll be overlapped one another. Conduction band and valence band, they'll overlap one another. This is called a valence band. This is called as the conduction band, okay? So in between the valence band and the conduction band, some energy gap will be there. This energy gap is called as the forbidden energy gap, forbidden. energy gap and uh, whenever we take this is that middle one line will be there between the valence band and conduction band that is called a fermi energy level this is called as the fermi energy level in between the conduction band and valence band some gap is there that is called as the forbidden energy gap the gap is called as the forbidden energy gap right in between the valence band and conduction band in between valence band and conduction band, uh, there is no energy gap, there is no gap. So in the case of the semiconductors, this valence band and the conduction band, they are separated by a small energy gap. So small energy gap will be there between the conduction band and the valence band. This is the valence band, this is the conduction band. In between the conduction band and the valence band, that is about one electron volt energy gap will be there. So exactly between these two, one energy level is there. That is called as the forbidden energy level. That energy level is called as the forbidden energy level. This forbidden energy level is there in between the, the forbidden energy level will be there in between the valence band and conduction band exactly. So forbidden energy gap will be there between the valence band and the conduction band exactly for the semiconductors. So when we take the insulators, for the insulators, there is a large energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band. There is a large energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band. This is the valence band and this is the conduction band. This is the valence band and conduction band, okay? So between these uh, about six electron volts of energy gap will be there between the insulators in uh, between the valence band and conduction band for the insulators, there is a about six electron volts energy gap will be there, right? So pure form of the semiconductors are called as the um, intrinsic semiconductors. These are called as the intrinsic pure form of semiconductors are called as the intrinsic. So when the impurities are added, on adding the impurities, they are called as the extrinsic. If the impurities are added, the semiconductors are called as the extrinsic semiconductors. Pure form are called as intrinsic and uh, doped. Doping means what? Adding of the impurities. It is called as the extrinsic semiconductors. In the pure form of the semiconductors, number of the holes in the number of the holes in the uh, in the case of the metal conductors, electrons are the charge carriers. In the case of the semiconductors, electrons and holes are the charge carriers. Electrons and holes are the charge carriers in the case of the uh, semiconductors. So in the pure form of semiconductors, uh, in, if uh, means the number of electrons in the conduction band will be equal to number of holes in the valence band. In the pure form of 
germanium or silicon means in the case of the intrinsic semiconductors number of holes in the conduction valence band is equal to number of holes in the conduction band so this will be same whenever we take that extrinsic semiconductors uh, in the case of the uh, n type if i take that n type semiconducting matter number of electrons are greater than that of the number of holes in the case in the case of n type semiconductor metal number of electrons are greater than number of holes when we take that p type semiconducting material so in the p type semiconducting material number of holes are greater than number of electrons number of holes are greater than number of electrons so how to say that p type semiconducting material and n type semiconducting material so when a for pure form of the germanium for the pure form of germanium or silicon if you add impurities so based on the impurity that may be n type or that may be p type semiconducting material so in the n type semiconducting material in the n type semiconducting material uh, that fifth group elements are donor impurities mm, are fifth group elements donor impurities are the pentavalent impurities they are added to the pure form of germanium or silicon then conducting ability of the semiconductor material that increases at 0 degree centigrade that semiconductor uh, acts as insulator with increasing of temperature insulating means the conducting property of the insulator semiconductor increases and it acts as a uh, conductor so in the case of the p type semiconducting material the impurities are added like um phosphorus arsenic antimony phosphorus arsenic antimony antimony like fifth group elements are the donor impurities or pentavalent impurities if they are added to pure form of semiconductors then n type semiconductor material will be formed when n type semiconductor material is taken this is the um, valence band and this is the conduction band this valence band and uh, conduction band in between the valence band and the conduction band one energy level will be there that energy level is called as the that level energy level is called as that energy level is called as the forbidden energy level forbidden energy level this is exactly middle for the pure form but it is that n type for n type semiconductor material it will be it will be below and near to the conduction band it will be below and near to the conduction band the forbidden energy level will be forbidden energy level will be near and below the conduction below and near to this n type when we take the p type semiconducting material in the case of the p type semiconducting material there is uh, indium gallium uh, aluminum indium gallium aluminum like of third group elements are donor impurities or trivalent impurities they are added to the pure form that uh, type of semiconductor is called as the n type p type semiconductor material in the case of the p type semiconductor material the forbidden energy gap will be forbidden energy gap will be near and above the valence band let us suppose these are the conduction band and valence bands this is the valence band and this is the conduction band in between that valence band and conduction band one energy level is there this energy level will say this energy level will say this is called as the forbidden energy level this is called as the forbidden energy level this is above and near to the valence band this is above and near to the valence band it is right in the case of anti semiconductor materials number of electrons in the uh, in will be greater than number of holes in this number of holes in the 
valence band will be greater than that of number of electrons. Okay, uh, whenever we take that concentration of the electron density is uh, Ne, concentration of the hole density is NH, and the concentration of the intrinsic charge carriers. Intrinsic charge carriers is Ni. Therefore, Ni is equal to um, Ne plus NH, Ne into NH. Ne into NH is equal to Ni square. Ne into NH is equal to Ni square. Right? This is. Uh, whenever one p type semiconducting material, one n type semiconducting material is combined, that will form the Pn junction diode. This will say that Pn junction diode. One p-type semiconductor material and one n-type semiconductor material is uh, combined. When we combine one p-type and one n-type, that is called as the that is called as this is a p-type and this is the n-type. So in this, whenever we take that p-type is connected to that. Uh, uh, pass to positive terminal of the battery or anti-type, it may connect it negative terminal of battery. But uh, before connecting it to any of the devices, if you take that, this is a PN junction diode. This PN junction diode that consists of PN junction diode that consists of one side p type some uh, semiconducting metal, one, one side n type semiconducting metal. So even though there is no external battery is connected to it, even though there is no battery connected to it. P region and P type and N type we will take it. So in this, this uh, will take that uh, majority charge carriers are the holes. Majority charge carriers are the holes. And in this uh, majority charge carriers are the electrons. Here also electrons will be there electrons here also holes will be there but may not even though there is no external battery connected to it due to high concentration of the holes at the p side they are to move, move towards n region and due to the high concentration of the electrons which are there inside they are to move towards p region as a result the middle layer which is free from the Mobile charge carriers. This is a negative. It's positive. Like this. So negative and a positive they'll be formed. So this layer which is free from the mobile charge carriers, a reason will be developed that a reason is called as the depletion layer. This layer is called as the depletion layer. The layer is called as the depletion layer, which is free from the mobile charge carriers, which is free from the mobile charge carriers. The depletion layer, which is free from the mobile charge carriers. So that uh, the, the depletion layer is uh, uh, different for a different uh, semiconductor materials. So for the germanium, this uh, depletion layer will be, uh, sorry, Potential barrier will say that the potential difference across this junction is called pain and depletion layer is called as the depletion layer uh, is called as the um, barrier potential. This is called as the VP barrier potential. This barrier potential is 0.3 volts for germanium. And this barrier potential is uh, 0.7 uh, volts for uh, silicon. It's for silicon. Silica. This PN junction diode, it may be connected uh, in parallel or it may be connected, it's a parallel net, it may be connected forward bias and it may be connected in reverse bias. What is that forward bias? For the PN junction diode, if for the PN junction diode, positive terminal is uh, connected to the P region and the negative terminal is connected to the N region, such combination will say that uh, forward bias. So positive to the P region and negative to the N region if they are connected. 
positive to the P region and negative to the N region if they are connected. This is called as the forward bias. This is called as forward bias. If um, whenever we take this, is, this is a pain junction diode. For this pain junction diode, positive is connected to the positive is connected to the battery positive terminal and the negative is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. A layer which is free from the mobile charge carriers. This is the P reason and this is the N reason. When it is connected to the battery positive terminal and battery negative terminal, that will say positive negative. This is called as that. Uh, this is called as the forward bias. This is called as forward bias. If the battery, if the battery positive terminal is connected to the battery positive terminal is connected to the uh, n type n type semiconductor metal and negative is connected to the p type then such combination will say that uh, reverse bias this we call it as the reverse bias this is called as rp rp for reverse bias so p reason and n reason we say that negative and positive this is called as reverse bias hmm. Like this, we may we may take this semiconducting devices, forward bias and reverse bias. So this uh, PN junction diode is used. PN junction diode is used as a rectifier, converting of the high voltage to low voltage. Sorry, alternating current into direct current. We will use the PN junction diode. For that, uh, two rectifiers are there. What are that? Half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier. Half-way rectifier and full-way rectifier. In the case of the half-way rectifier, uh, one normal transformer is used. This is the AC input wave is provided, and this is that uh, this works on that mutual inductance. So for this, one PN junction diode is uh, connected, and uh, this is connected to the normal transformer. It's connected to the normal transformer. Uh, see that across these, across the load resistance when across the load resistance we measure that output voltage this is a pn junction diode p reason and n reason only diode d so this is what happens whenever the positive whenever we give that ac ac input signal is provided to it positive and negative then in the forward bias this diode will act as a uh, means when the positive and a positive half cycle is provided when the positive half cycle is feeded across it it acts as a forward bias in the forward bias it will offer it will allow the current to pass through it in the forward bias it will allow to allow the current to pass through it in the forward bias but in the reverse bias when the negative half cycle is feeded across this it does not allow the uh, current to pass through it it will offer very high resistance in opposite direction that's why it won't connect. Again, whenever it is a positive terminal is faded across it, when the positive terminal is faded across it, this uh, will convert alternating current into direct current. When the, again, negative terminal is provided, negative half cycle is connected, this again, it, uh, it does not connect. So only when positive half cycles are faded, positive half cycle is faded across it, it acts as conduct, means forward bias, and it will convert AC to DC. So it is called as the half-way rectifier. So it is not so helpful for the, the purpose. That's why, what did they do? They have designed one more, uh, one more is called as the full wave rectifier. They have designed one more rectifier called as the full wave rectifier. In the case of the full wave rectifier, they have used two diodes. They have used two diodes. They have used diodes D1 and D2. This D1 and D2 are connected to a central tap. 
these D1 and D2 are connected to central tap type transformer. Central tap type transformer, they are connected. This is called central central key, central, central key. This is C for central key. This is a positive half cycle, negative half cycle. Then output is measured. The output is measured across this. The output is measured across this. Across the load resistance, they have measured. Then, whenever the pass to half cycle is repeated, pass to half cycle is repeated across it, then output will be there. The output will be. When the pass to half cycle is repeated, it acts as a forward bias. And uh, when the negative half cycle is repeated, it acts as a forward bias. So once again, when the pass to half cycle is repeated across this uh, um, full wave rectifier, it will be central tap key that switches it to the first diode and uh, diode D1 will be in forward bias and D2 will be in reverse bias. So it will connect, it will convert AC to DC. It will convert AC to DC. When the negative half cycle is repeated, when the negative half cycle is feeded, it will switches central tap key switches to that second diode. It will act as a forward bias. This will be in forward bias and this will be in reverse bias. Then what happens? This will convert AC to DC. This AC to DC will be converted. Hmm? Whenever that uh, negative half cycle is feeded uh, or ne next positive half cycle is feeded, it will act as a forward bias and it will be reverse biased. So this is uh, this will convert AC to DC. Again, uh, negative half cycle is given. It will be forward bias. It is a reverse bias. So it will convert AC to DC. Like uh, AC to DC, that will be converted. This full wave will be uh, full wave will be rectified. Efficiency of this will be 0 0.812, 0 0.812 RL divided by RF plus RL. RF plus RL. What is RL load resistance? What is RF? Forward resistance. RF is called as the forward resistance. RL is called as the load resistance. Next, uh, whenever take that Zena diode. Zena diode is also PN junction diode, but it is a heavily doped PN junction diode is called as the Zena diode. So the difference between that uh, power, uh, PN junction diode and Zena diode is heavily doped PN junction diode is called as the Zena diode. For the Zena diode, for the Zena diode, this is uh, uh, a Zena diode that will act in forward bias as well as in reverse bias. Zena diode that will act in forward bias as well as in the reverse bias, right? The it's a uh, it is used to control. The voltage means Zena diode that that is used as a stabilizer or voltage regulator. Zena diode is used as a stabilizer or voltage regulator. Then I is equal to V I divided by V Z. I is equal to V I divided by V Z. Next transformer. Next one is transformer. Transformer is uh, to convert the current from the low resistance circuit to that high resistance circuit. So the transformer that consists of the three reasons that will take two types of the transformers, PNP transformer and NPN transformer. So when we take this PNP and NPN, the difference is like this. Uh, when we take this is that uh, PNP, tra PNP trans transformer, PNP transformer, This is the base, this is the collector, and this is the emitter. So any type of transformer, get the PNP or NPN transformer, then
keep forgetting that a pnp transformer pnp means what in between the two p type semiconducting metals one n type semiconducting metal will be sandwiched that means two pn junction diodes they are connected uh, back to back that is called as the pnp transfer trans transformer so in the pnp transfer transformer this arrow mark will be from the emitter base collector this is called emitter this is called base it is the collector so arrow mark will be from the emitter to that base so in the case of the npn transistor the arrow mark will be from the base to the collector base to that uh, emitter see the total current that is this is a uh, emitter is heavily doped a uh, base is moderate means a base is less doped collector is moderately doped the total current that is coming from the emitter is e out of that uh, ib is the current across the base and ic is the current that is reaching so uh, the current across the base is uh, 2% to 2% to 3% of the uh, emitter current 2% to 3% of the emitter current so then when we take that collector current is uh, about 97% to 98% of the 97% to 98% of the uh, emitter current this is so from this it may be connected in uh, common base common base may be there common emitter will be there common collector will be there so these transformers we may connect either common base common collector or common emitter so whenever we connect these in common base configuration alpha is called as that uh, um, current gain alpha is the current gain so alpha is equal to delta ic divided by delta ic delta ic divided by delta ie common in the case in the case of the common base configuration current gain alpha is equal to delta ic divided by delta ie when we connect them in common common uh, collector configuration common uh, um, common emitter configuration when we connect them in common emitter configuration current gain is e, is delta ic divided by delta ie sorry delta ib it is when the common common emitter configuration whenever you connect common emitter configuration whenever you connect current gain beta is equal to delta ic divided by delta ib so the relation between the common collector common uh, common emitter common collector or common base the relation will be like this so then uh, we'll take that beta is that current gain in the common emitter configuration beta is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha beta is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha gamma is equal to beta divided by 1 plus beta so beta is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha gamma is equal to beta by 1 plus beta these are that different uh, uh okay so then whenever we take that input resistance ri is equal to delta vbe delta vbe divided by delta ic delta vb divided by delta ib delta vb divided by delta ie at constant uh, potential difference across the collector and emitter so output resistance uh, vo uh, R O is equal to delta V C E divided by delta I C. This is so we will take this alpha beta. Okay, then we'll see that numeric and numericals in this. semiconductors this majority charge carriers in p type semiconducting material are 
majority charge carriers in p-type semiconductor materials are holes. A p-type semiconductor can be obtained by adding for the pure form of germanium or silicon. If we add indium, gallium, uh, aluminium, if they are added to the pure form of semiconducting material, then it is called as the p-type semiconducting material. In the p-type semiconducting material, what are the majority charge carriers? Holes are the majority charge carriers, and uh, electrons are the minority charge carriers. Whenever we take that, the valence of an impurity added to germanium crystal in order to convert it to into a p-type semiconductor is. So the valence of impurity added to germanium crystal in order to convert it into p-type semiconductor material is. Uh, P-type means third group elements are the accepted impurities or the trivalent impurities. So trivalent means three. That's why this valency is called as the three. Valency is taken as the three. The valency, valence of an impurity added to that germanium crystal in order to convert it P-type is three. If it is an N-type, it will be five. Next, a semiconductor, the concept, in a semiconductor, the concentration of electrons is 18 to 10 power 4, uh, 10 power 14 electrons. Concentration of the electrons means electron density is given. It is 18 to 10 power 14 per centimeter cube. Next, what did they give? That, that uh, concentration of the holes is given. Concentration of the holes is uh, 5 into 10 power 12 per centimeter cube. 5 into 10 power 12, 5, 10 power 12 per centimeter cube. So the semiconductor is. So if number of electrons are, means uh, electron density greater than hole density, this is called as the N type. If it is called a, if it is called a, if, we, if the number of electrons are greater than the number of holes, density of the electrons are greater than the density of the holes, it is N type. So N is 18 10 power 14. NE is, N -E is 18 10 power 14. That's why it is N type semiconductor metal. If, if NH is greater than NE, then it is called as the P type. Here, NE is 18 to 10 power 14, and 18 to 10 power 14 is greater than this. That's why it is called N type semiconductor material. Next. Silicon is silicon is a semiconductor. If a small amount of arsenic is added to it, then its a conducting ability increases. Whenever we add the whenever we add impurities. Adding of impurities, nothing but one impurity atom. Every impurity atom, every impurity atom will provide one free electron to each. Or every impurity atom, it will provide one free hole to each. So depends upon the impurity, it may give the free number of electrons or free holes. So that's why uh, in the pure form of the germanium or silica, equal number of the holes in the valence band and uh, conduction band will be there. So in the conduction band, uh, how many electrons are there? Then uh, in the valence band, equal number of the holes will be there. So conduction band and valence band, they consist of equal number of charge carriers. That's why its conducting ability is less. When impurities are added, maybe holes or maybe electrons, the conducting ability that increases. So if a small amount of the arsenic is added to it, then it is called as the, uh, means its conducting ability increases. Next, to obtain a p-type semiconductor, we need to we need to dope a pure silicon with aluminium. So we need to dope with a pure silicon with aluminium. To obtain a p-type semiconductor, we need to dope a pure a pure silicon with the aluminium. Electrical conductivity of semiconductor increases with rise in temperature. If temperature increases, electrical conductivity also increases. When a semiconductor is heated, its resistance decreases. When a semiconductor is heated, its resistance decreases. That's why conducting ability that increases. Then an insulator, the forbidden energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band is the order of five electron volts. In an insulator, the forbidden energy gap between the 
valence band and the conduction band is the order of five electron volts. That's a six, but it's not there. Actually, it is about six electron volts, but in the absence, they gave five. So order, order means near value. Next, the energy gap, energy band gap of silicon is approximately 1.1 electron volt. Then the forbidden energy gap in conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Forbidden energy gap. In the case of the uh, connect, in the case of the conductors, forbidden energy gap won't be there. Forbidden energy gap won't be there. And in the case of the semiconductors, forbidden energy gap is less, means one electron volts. For metals, for metals, forbidden energy gap for metals, forbidden energy gap. Forbidden energy gap is zero. For semiconductors, for semiconductors, forbidden energy gap is uh, about one electron volt. And uh, for, ins uh, for insulators, insulators forbidden energy gap it is uh, about six electron volts so then uh, we have to take what is they have mentioned they have mentioned uh, eg1 eg2 like that so this is a uh, connectors connectors is called as the eg1 this is uh, eg2 eg3 that is then uh, insulators it is for metals, for metals, energy gap is less. They are asked then uh, relation, uh, less than or more than that we have to take that. In, in case of the metals, for, I mean, energy gap is less, EG1 less, correct, less. And for the semiconductors, it is less when compared with that insulators, less, this is correct. B option is correct. EG1 less than EG2 less than EG3. EG1 less than EG2 less than EG3. Like that we will take. Next. Let NP and NE be the number of holes and uh, number of holes and the conduction electrons respectively in a semiconductor. The number of holes uh, in the uh, in the valence band is equal to number of holes in valence band is equal to number of electrons in the in the valence in the connection band that is for the intrinsic semiconductors. In an extrinsic P and the N type semiconductor materials, the ratio of the impurity atoms to the pure semiconductor atoms is 10 power 7. In an in an uh, in extrinsic P and N type semiconductors materials the ratio of the impurity atoms to the pure semiconductor atoms is in the order of 10 power is the um, the ratio is 10 power minus 7. Next, forbidden energy gap. The forbidden gap in the energy bands of the germanium at room temperature is about uh, whereas it's a forbidden energy gap of germanium at room temperature. It is a forbidden energy gap for the germanium, it is uh, 0 0.7 electron volts. And for the silicon, for the silicon, it is uh, 0, 1, 1, or 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1 electron volts. So this is a 0 0.67 is nearly equal to 0 0.7. That's why forbidden energy gap of, forbidden energy gap of germanium at room temperature is taken as 0 0.67 electron volts. Next, at zero, at zero Kelvin, a piece of germanium, uh, that means with increasing of temperature, conducting ability of the semiconductors increases. With the decreasing of uh, uh, temperature, conducting ability, that decreases. So at zero degree, at zero degree Kelvin, uh, the piece of germanium, 
that will uh, that will that will uh, be, that will act as a insulator that will act as a insulator so it's called it becomes a back conductor of electricity a semiconductor is cooled from t1 kelvins to t2 kelvins it's a resistance so if temperature increases resistance decreases conducting ability increases as the temperature it's as it is cooled from the t1 degrees to t2 conductor is cooled as it is uh, temperature is decreased uh, resistance that increases as temperature is decreased it is resistance increases so if np and ne be the number of holes uh, number of holes and uh, conduction electrons in an extrinsic semiconductor so then uh, number of holes may be greater than number of electrons number of electrons may be greater than number of holes that depends upon the type of the impurity that is added maybe np N, nh is greater than np or N, n e is greater than nh that depends upon the impurity we are adding next in intrinsic semiconductor at room temperature the number of electrons and holes are equal in an intrinsic semiconductor at room temperature number of electrons and holes are equal so fermi energy level of an intrinsic semiconductor lies fermi level of fermi energy level of an intrinsic semi semiconductor lies in the middle of the forbidden energy gap fermi energy level fel for the intrinsic semiconductors pure form of semiconductors it is exactly middle of that valence band and conduction band in a semiconductor the separation between the conduction band and valence band is the order of so in a semiconductor the separation between the conduction band and valence band is semiconductor means about one electron volts insulator means what about six electron volts that's why one electron volts is correct see in the cutoff voltage for silicon diode is approximately in cutoff voltage so silicon diode cut off voltage is nothing but uh, barrier potential barrier potential we take that barrier potential for the germanium is uh, 0.3 volts barrier potential for the silicon it is uh, silicon it is 0.7 electron uh, 0.7 volts it is 0.7 volts so 0.7 is not there near value we have to choose it next the electrical circuit used to get a smooth dc output from a rectifier circuit is called as the filter the electrical circuit used to get a smooth dc output from rectifier is called as the filter so filter circuits are used to get smooth dc smooth dc so pi filter is the best filter next pn junction diode works as insulator if it is connected to connected in the reverse bias how to connect in the reverse bias p reason is connected to the battery negative terminal and n reason is connected to the battery positive terminal negative terminal and the positive terminal negative and the positive so p reason is connected to the battery positive terminal and n reason connected to the battery negative terminal such it is called as a reverse bias we'll say that it is reverse bias so the reverse bias in a pn junction diode so the reverse biasing in a pn junction diode uh, if potential barrier decreases that uh, reverse bias in pn junction diode biasing that increases biasing means what connect so the reverse biasing in pn junction diode increases that potential barrier if potential barrier is increased it won't allow that current to pass through so the electrical resistance of depletion layer is larger because electrical resistance of the depletion layer is larger because it is uh, yeah, no charge carriers will be there it is uh, it is free from depletion layer is free from the mobile charge carriers that's why it has no charge carriers uh, that means it has no uh, what is given the electrical resistance of the depletion layer is large uh, the electrical resistance is large because it has no free charge carriers the depletion layer don't have the free charge carriers this is that uh, circuit given below what is the current flowing through the circuit they have asked it what is the current flowing through it so we'll take that diode is uh, uh, pn junction diode 
and uh, its uh, resistance they didn't give it. Forward resistance will be there, that is they didn't give. So we know potential difference, we have to take that. In between these two, we have to take the potential difference. What is the potential difference between these two? Delta V is equal to four minus one. So Delta V is equal to three volt. Potential difference is taken as three volts and resistance offered or connected is taken as uh, 300 volts. Therefore, we'll take that that V is equal to I R, then I is equal to delta V is equal to, so V is equal to uh, I R, then I is equal to V divided by R. This potential difference is there, that's why delta V have written. Mm, from this we will write the current passing through it, I is equal to delta V potential difference three divided by, divided by that uh, resistance offered by it, resistance offered by it. It is 300, uh, not 3000, it is 300. So 300 uh, ohms. So this will get cancelled how many times? 100 times, 1 by 100. So 1 by 100, if you bring to the numerator, it will be 10 power minus 2. 10 power minus 2 ampere cities. Next. Next. If the forward voltage in a semiconductor diode is doubled, then width of the depletion layer becomes half. Forward uh, by forward voltage that is reciprocal to that, uh, means inverse to that uh, width of the depletion layer. So forward bias, if it is increased to two times, this uh, uh, potential barrier, potential barrier across the depletion layer that will be half. Next, a PN engine diode used as a rectifier. When PN junction diode is reverse biased, electrons and electrons and holes they'll move away from the junction. They'll move from the away from the junction uh, in the depletion region. This is what type of this PN junction diode. This P and N, PN, 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 PN like that. What did they ask? A, two PN junction diodes can be connected in series by three different modes as shown in the figure. If the potential difference in the junction is the is the same than the correct reading. So this is a PN junction diodes, P type, N type. Eh? P type and N type will be there. So this is N and N they are connected. So P, PN junction diode means P region, N region, and P region, N region, or N region, P region, and N region, P region, like that. NP means uh, PN junction diode, we can write PN, or NP, we may write. This is that uh, uh, forward, this is the reverse like that. So PN may be there, or NP may be there. But in this, what is there? N and N are there. That's not. So this is a P type and N type, one PN junction diode. So P type, N type, PN junction diode. So it is uh, uh, taken as proper order. So this N type and P type, N type and P type, then we can take. So that's why PN junction diode can be connected in series. If we want to connect them in series, the connection will be PN and PN, or NP or NP. NP like that, we have, we have to connect. So only the circuit two and three. This is correct and this is correct. This is not correct. This is this won't be in series, right? I'm going to stop the class here. Thank you.